If you own a CTX700 or a CTX800, you can transfer files to your keyboard by connecting it to a computer running the data manager for CTX software. There are two separate versions for both Mac and Windows machines, both of which are available for free, and because all Casio keyboards in the current lineup use class-compliant USB MIDI, you won't need to download any additional drivers to get things up and running. The only extra thing you might need to buy is a USB printer cable to connect your keyboard to one of the USB slots on your computer. But as the name suggests, you might already own one of these cables for use with other USB accessories like printers, webcams, or audio interfaces. For this video, I'm only going to cover the functions related to importing and exporting user songs and recordings, but you can also refer to the software manual to learn about the other features in more detail. You can download the data manager software and the included manual by following the link in the description down below. Once you've hooked up your printer cable, turn on your keyboard and open up the data manager software. On the left part of the screen, you'll see a list of compatible files available for transfer from your computer, and on the right, you'll see a list of the user data that's already saved on your keyboard. By default, the program will bring up the rhythm transfer page, but we're interested in songs and recordings for the moment, so use the drop-down menu here in the top left to select a different file type. We'll start with user songs for now, so choose that option and the transfer screen will update accordingly. If you've never transferred any files before, it's pretty likely that both of these lists will be empty at first, so before we move on, we need to bring some files into Data Manager. There are a great many MIDI files available for free on the internet with just a quick Google search, ranging from classical etudes to pop tunes and of course piano practice drills. You can also make your own MIDI sequences using a digital audio workstation or music composition software like Finale or Sibelius. Once you've either downloaded or created some MIDI files, the easiest way to add them to Data Manager is to simply select them in your file browser and then drag and drop them into the list on the left. Assuming you've chosen properly compatible files, they'll appear in the transfer list once they're done loading in. Real quick side note, if you switch to the Preferences tab on the top row, you'll see the User Data File Folder Path. This determines where Data Manager will look for files when it populates the transfer list and where files will end up if you bring them in with the drag and drop method I just demonstrated. The first time you open Data Manager, it should automatically create a new user data folder on your hard drive, and that newly created folder is pre-selected as the default file path. Now, you don't have to change this, but if you would prefer to store and access files from somewhere else on your hard drive, you can use the Browse button on the right to select that folder and update the file path. Once you're done, switch back to the Transfer tab and click the Refresh button to update the list with all compatible files available in that newly selected folder. As you can see over here on the right, the CTX700 can hold 10 user songs at a time, which are stored in song slots 161 through 170. All you need to do is drag and drop a song from the list on the left into an empty slot in the list on the right, and it will transfer over automatically. For quick bulk transfer, you can select multiple songs and drag them all over at once, but do note that you'll get a warning about overwriting onboard memory if any of the song slots are already full. Over on the keyboard side of things, the display will show a bulk out message and stop all ongoing sounds during the transfer process, but once that's done, it will automatically take you to the most recently imported song. Notice that user MIDI files retain their names when you import them, which is very helpful for organizational purposes, but you may want to abbreviate them because the display can only show the first eight characters of a MIDI file name. You can also export a user song from the onboard memory and store it on your computer by dragging and dropping from right to left, although in practice you're much more likely to do this with a lesson or multi-track recording rather than a MIDI song. Speaking of which, now that we're all done with our user songs, I'll just use the drop-down menu to switch over to multi-track recordings and the lists will update accordingly. This may look familiar, and that's because regardless of what file type you have selected, Data Manager always uses the same drag and drop method across the board. Just like before, I'll simply transfer one of the user recordings stored on my hard drive into one of the five user recording slots in the onboard memory. However, unlike MIDI song files, these recording files do not retain their names when you import them to the keyboard, and are instead given a generic name that corresponds to the recording slot you chose as the transfer destination. With that in mind, it's very important to stay organized by giving your MRF recording files descriptive names when you export them to your hard drive. Fortunately, you can very quickly rename your recording files within Data Manager by simply double-clicking them in the list on the left. Well, that sums up just about everything you need to know to become a Data Manager power user, but one last note before we wrap this one up. 
Even though the CDP S350 is very similar to the CTX700 and 800, it is unfortunately not compatible with the Data Manager software. However, like the CTX800, it has an extra USB port on the back panel that allows you to use a flash drive to transfer data back and forth. So stay tuned for the next video in this series where I'll walk you through all the details of that process. As always, remember to like and subscribe to Casio Music Gear for more tutorial content, and feel free to ask any questions you might have in the comments down below. This has been Chandler Holloway for Casio. Thanks for watching.